the entire Trump project, paradoxically, is attacked as an enemy of democracy, is to return democracy to the United States. I am proud to shut down the government. That seems crazy. This doesn't look like politics. The Trump campaign has sparked complicated debates around the globe. Some people view his actions as a threat to democracy, while others believe he is working to restore it in the United States. Many feel there's something larger at play beyond typical political disagreements. Tucker Carlson, for instance, had a major change in his views, especially after Donald Trump's assassination attempt. However, in a different surprising story, Elon Musk just revealed what the US government is trying to hide. The attempted murder. Donald Trump took to the stage in July 2024 to recount the details of the assassination attempt during his rally in Pennsylvania. With a deep sense of gratitude, he thanked the American people for their overwhelming support and love after the attack. He began by reflecting on how close he came to losing his life, noting that the bullet was just a fraction away from hitting him. Trump explained that many people had asked him to share what happened, so he decided to recount the events. In a rare moment of vulnerability, he cautioned that this would be the only time he would share such painful details, setting the stage for an honest and reflective account of what happened. It was a warm and beautiful evening in Butler Township, Pennsylvania. The campaign event was going strong, with loud music playing and the crowd cheering excitedly. Trump took the stage, feeling confident and energized as he spoke about the achievements of his administration, particularly regarding immigration at the southern border. Beside him, a screen displayed impressive statistics about border crossings. As Trump turned to his right to point out the chart, he heard a sudden, loud whizzing sound and felt a sharp impact on his right ear. He immediately recognized it as a bullet when he saw blood covering his hand. Realizing the severity of the situation, he dropped to the ground. The Secret Service agents quickly rushed to protect him, displaying immense bravery as bullets continued to fly above their heads. Trump later noted that if he hadn't moved his head at the last second, the bullet would have struck him directly and he might not have survived. He was amazed by how things turned out, noting that it was remarkable the crowd stayed calm and did not panic despite the chaos and gunfire. Instead of fleeing, the supporters stayed and pointed out the shooter. Amid the danger, Trump felt a strange sense of calm. The Secret Service agents, risking their own lives, managed to neutralize the threat. Their sniper, from a considerable distance, took down the assailant with a single shot. Reflecting on that night, Trump said it felt almost miraculous that he survived, stressing how unlikely it was for him to still be present speaking with the audience at the rally. In a different incident that seemed more threatening, police in Pennsylvania used a taser to subdue a man who tried to force his way into the press area at a Donald Trump rally. The incident unfolded when the man managed to climb over the bicycle rack that enclosed the media section and began scaling a platform where TV crews were set up. Surrounded by officers, he was quickly removed from the scene. The man's motives remain unclear, but the altercation happened right after Trump had criticized major media outlets for what he deemed unfavorable coverage. Meanwhile, Elon Musk shared a similar incident on social media. In our discussion, we will explore both of these developments, including Nigel Farage's reaction to Musk's speech and the latest updates on Trump leading up to the United States presidential elections. Donald Trump is different. Former Fox News host Tucker Carlson claimed that Donald Trump was transformed after surviving an assassination attempt. Carlson sought to present Trump in a new light, suggesting that his survival was a result of divine intervention. He praised Trump's response in the week following the attack, noting that, unlike many politicians, Trump chose not to use the situation to stir up national outrage. According to Carlson at the Republican National Convention, he proposed that despite Trump being labeled a threat to democracy, he might be working to restore it in the United States. Carlson found the situation bewildering and suggested that something deeper was occurring. After watching the footage of the shooting in Butler, Pennsylvania many times, Carlson thought it was a turning point for Trump and the country. He believed the shooting was a crucial moment that changed Trump from just a politician to a true leader. Carlson even suggested that this change might have been guided by a higher power. 
He also disagreed with the idea that Trump was selfish. Instead, he pointed out that Trump focused on the bravery of his supporters rather than his pain. He noted that the shooting had a big impact on the convention, the mood of the nation, and even Trump's behavior. He also argued that while the title of president could be attained through a formal process, true leadership was something much deeper and more organic. He thought that Trump showed true leadership by focusing on the bravery of others instead of talking about his pain after the shooting. Carlson felt that Trump's bravery not only inspired those around him, but also demonstrated that real leadership involves putting others first. He further emphasized that Trump's actions following the shooting were about uniting people rather than sowing division. He compared this with other politicians who might have used such an event to stir up anger or fear. In Carlson's view, Trump's approach was a significant departure from the divisive image often portrayed by his critics. Carlson said that Trump's public life centered around one main idea, which is that a leader's primary responsibility is to take care of their people. He believed this idea is at the heart of democracy, which means leaders should genuinely represent and serve the people. He felt that if leaders ignore the needs and wishes of the people for too long, then the system would no longer be a real democracy. Carlson pointed out the clear gap between Washington leaders and the American people, saying that while leaders focus on foreign issues, they ignore domestic problems. He believed this gap has caused widespread frustration. This disconnect, he argued, had led to widespread frustration and a sense of betrayal among many Americans. Despite the controversy surrounding Trump, Carlson saw him as someone committed to addressing these issues and prioritizing the needs of the country. In conclusion, Carlson believed that recent events had led many to question what was happening. He suggested that even those who didn't believe in a higher power might start to see a deeper significance. Carlson recounted how Trump, even though they weren't close friends, reached out with a supportive message, demonstrating his true concern for others. In conclusion to his speech at the convention, Carlson argued that Trump's recent behavior and statements demonstrated a genuine commitment to leadership, presenting a truer form of democracy than what has been seen in recent years. Trump joins TikTok after calling for its ban. Donald Trump made a surprising move by joining TikTok, even though he once tried to ban the app while he was president. Back in 2020, Trump signed an executive order aiming to block TikTok due to its ties with China, a ban that was eventually blocked by United States courts. Now, Trump has reversed his stance, openly criticizing recent efforts to restrict TikTok, arguing that such actions would only benefit Meta, the owner of Facebook. Since launching his TikTok account in June 2024, Trump has quickly amassed over 3.6 million followers. He has declared his intention to use every tool available to communicate directly with the American people. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden also used TikTok for his re-election campaign before announcing he was stepping down. Biden attracted only about 340,000 followers, which is like 10 times fewer than Trump. This situation follows Biden's recent decision to sign a law requiring TikTok's Chinese owner, ByteDance, to sell the app within nine months or face a ban in the United States. This measure was introduced due to concerns that TikTok might share user data with the Chinese government, a claim that TikTok continues to deny. The introduction of the law surprised many of TikTok's 170 million users in the United States. Some, like Marcus Bosch, a researcher at Hamburg University, believe Trump's presence on TikTok might be seen as a safeguard against a potential ban, which could explain his rapid follower growth. Bosch notes that while TikTok may not decide the election, it serves as a valuable gauge of cultural and social trends. Caroline Levitt, a spokesperson for Trump's campaign, told the news that this move is part of Trump's strategy to connect with young voters, an effort that has already gained traction. Trump's first TikTok post, a brief 13-second clip from a mixed martial arts event, has racked up more than 60 million views. This comes after his conviction in a criminal trial for falsifying business records in connection with hush money payments to Stormy Daniels. Trump is likely to win. For the first time in nearly a decade, Donald Trump is now seen as the leading candidate to win the upcoming presidential election. This is a notable shift, 
particularly considering the significant skepticism and criticism he has faced over the years. As he continues his campaign, Trump is eagerly anticipating the results and hopes to achieve his goal of making America great again. There's been a lot of chatter about how Trump might be pushing away moderate voters. Some people argue that Donald Trump is intensifying the country's divisions, claiming that his methods are among the most polarizing and harsh ever seen in presidential history. Despite these concerns, Trump is making a concerted effort to present himself as a unifying figure. His team is especially worried about moderate voters. These are people who might consider supporting Joe Biden or decide not to vote at all. They believe these voters are crucial to his electoral success. As a result, Trump is dedicating significant effort to projecting a sense of unity and is actively seeking endorsement and support from influential Republican figures to strengthen his position. Capitol Hill is a picture of deep division right now. Many are concerned about the state of the country and are watching closely. Despite this, Trump's presence has brought a new wave of energy and excitement to his party. His supporters feel optimistic and driven, believing they have the common sense and determination needed to restore the nation's greatness. This time around, Trump seems to have an edge. Polls and analyses from sources like The Economist and Betting Markets suggest he has a strong chance of winning. In Nevada, he is showing a 5.3% lead and gaining ground in blue states like Minnesota and Maine. He's making surprising gains. Newsweek has reported an astonishing lead for Donald Trump in the state of Maine. This is particularly surprising because Maine has not seen a Republican victory in 36 years. Of course, we can't predict the future with certainty, but as of now, Trump appears stronger than ever. If these trends continue, he might not only win the presidency, but also help the grand old party secure control of both Congress and the White House. From shock to support, how Trump is changing the game. Now let's talk about the major business figures who had distanced themselves from Trump after the George Floyd riots. These individuals are now urgently trying to show their support for him as they prepare for the possibility of a Trump second term. In a stunning shift, some of the most vocal never-Trumpers from the 2020 election are now changing their tune and publicly backing him. Despite their recommendations, their efforts to distance themselves were not very successful. Trump is now generating a tremendous amount of money, and large crowds are showing up to see him wherever he goes. This change shows how the business leaders are reacting to Trump's growing influence and the possibility of him getting elected again. Across the Atlantic, Europeans and others are also bracing for Trump's potential comeback. With Trump in the picture, they understand that they won't receive any more special favors or leniency. At the same time, the pro-coalition is working hard to get financial backing from the G7 countries before Trump has a chance to change their plans. However, a growing sense of unease is spreading among the elite, marked by both nervousness and fear, especially after being caught off guard by the recent results in the European Union elections. They are struggling to understand why voters are moving away from the perceived benefits of globalism and why Trump's Make America Great Again message is gaining traction among minorities and young people. In response, Democrats are sticking to their old tactics. They continue to label Trump as a dictator and a threat, but this approach hasn't been effective. They argue that he is on a losing streak and resorting to violence to win, but they overlook that the violence they are concerned about is coming from their hardcore activists and the consequences of democratic policies. Now it's time for today's subscriber pick. Elon Musk recently opened up about his own experiences with life-threatening situations. He shared on social media that while it's quite rare for him to receive direct threats, he has faced some unsettling encounters in the past six months. In these instances, the threats came from individuals who were struggling with severe mental health issues. Meanwhile, Elon Musk just revealed what the US government is trying to hide. Elon shared two particular instances where people came to Austin with guns and their intentions were quite obvious. In one case, a person with severe schizophrenia thought that Elon had secretly placed a chip in his head. The idea that someone believed Elon had put a chip in their head was so strange that Elon humorously wondered if the chip was broken or needed a software update. In another case, a different person who had stopped taking their medication showed clear signs of being completely out of touch with reality. 
Elon noted that increased visibility often leads to a higher risk of receiving threats, regardless of one's actions or behavior. Simply being well-known can attract attention from unstable individuals. He also expressed concern that some political groups might use these incidents as a basis to advocate for more restrictions on personal freedoms. And now for the big question. What do you think about the way Elon Musk's high profile might influence both threats he receives and political responses to these incidents? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Nigel Farage responded to the public regarding Elon Musk. In our modern digital world, where misinformation is widespread, the discussion about what should be allowed on social media has become more urgent than ever. Nigel Farage emphasizes this in a virtual interview that social media should be a space for speculation, inquiry, and information sharing, even if we can't always verify its accuracy right away. He believes that this kind of open exchange is crucial for fostering community awareness and engagement. However, Farage is deeply concerned about recent efforts to limit these freedoms. He criticizes a prime minister, Keir Starmer, for attempting to control the narrative on these issues, which he sees as a serious threat to free speech. Farage also added that Elon Musk has also expressed concern and predicted a strong backlash against such measures. In addition, a new proposal suggests teaching children as young as five how to recognize extremism and fake news, which has raised concerns about potential overreach. While Farage supports the idea of critical thinking, he worries that overly restrictive guidelines might label legitimate dissent as extremist, thereby stifling democratic debate. Farage also reflects on recent events, such as the tragic case involving young girls, where online speculation about the perpetrator's background led to confusion and unresolved questions. Trump responds to voting criticism. In a newly released interview with Dr. Phil McGraw, Donald Trump made headlines with his comments. Dr. Phil, known for his sympathetic approach towards Trump, conducted a two-part interview, with the second part set to feature Robert Kennedy Jr. In the interview with Dr. Phil McGraw, Trump sought to clarify some of his controversial statements. He emphasized that if he wins the upcoming election, he plans to implement significant changes swiftly. Trump argued that these changes would reduce the need for voters to stay actively involved in future elections. He explained that his comments were meant to encourage voter participation in the current election, not to suggest the end of elections entirely. His main focus, he said, is on ensuring the success of the current electoral process. Transitioning to another controversial topic, Trump addressed his earlier dictator for a day comment made during an interview with Sean Hannity. He clarified that his comment was meant as a joke and that he had no intention of becoming a dictator. Trump explained that he used the remark to demonstrate his desire to quickly implement policies, particularly on energy and border security, if he were given temporary extraordinary powers. He made it clear that his aim was not to set up a dictatorship, but to make necessary changes efficiently. The interview has not gone unnoticed by political analysts. CNN's senior political commentator, Scott Jennings, and Congressman Adam Kinzinger offered their perspectives on Trump's explanations. Kinzinger voiced some skepticism about whether Trump's clarifications would fully address concerns, noting that while the earlier comments might have been exaggerated, they could still provoke questions. Jennings concurred with Kinzinger, suggesting that the emphasis on Trump's dictator remarks might be overstated, considering the broader context of his presidency and political discourse. Overall, Trump's conversation with Dr. Phil has sparked a lively debate and analysis, with Trump defending his previous statements and striving to clear up any misunderstandings about his intentions. Federal workers fear relocation under Trump's plan. Laura Dodson and other federal workers, who have long been a key part of the economy in the nation's capital and its suburbs, are once again anxious about the possibility of being uprooted from their jobs. During former President Donald Trump's administration, it was announced that her office within the United States Department of Agriculture would be relocated. The plan was to move about 75 employees to Kansas City, Missouri. However, fewer than 40 people actually moved. The rushed relocation process, 
which didn't consider the need to find new homes, jobs for spouses, or schools for children, led to several problems. Some employees retired early, while others took new federal positions, resulting in setbacks for the agency. Now, Trump's proposal to relocate up to 100,000 federal jobs from Virginia, Maryland, and the District of Columbia under his Agenda 47 plan is causing fresh anxiety among federal workers. Even the Republican candidate has called the plan crazy. Furthermore, Trump's proposals could affect his chances in Virginia, a state he lost in 2016 and 2020, where a United States Senate seat considered safe for Democrats is also up for grabs. Dodson, the acting vice president of the American Federation of Government Employees, which represents the Economic Research Service, mentioned that the situation was causing significant anxiety and discomfort among the workforce. She explained that workers were concerned about their jobs, homes, and livelihoods due to the uncertainty and strong negative sentiments towards federal employees. The concerns go beyond that. Federal workers are also worried about Project 2025, a proposed plan led by Trump's longtime allies to reorganize the federal government. This plan includes cutting thousands of jobs and removing job protections for some workers. Although Trump has recently distanced himself from this proposal, it continues to cause anxiety among federal employees. Trump recasts himself as abortion rights supporter. Donald Trump recently attracted attention with an unexpected social media statement. Just one day after he publicly declared that he had no regrets about appointing the Supreme Court justices who overturned Roe Wade, Trump claimed that his administration would be beneficial for women's reproductive rights. The term reproductive rights is often associated with advocacy for abortion rights. Many people see Trump's use of this term as an attempt to reposition himself as a supporter of these rights and to present himself as a more moderate figure on a highly contentious issue. Trump's recent statement came under intense scrutiny, especially regarding his role in ending federal abortion protections. At the Democratic National Convention, the focus was on the end of Roe Wade and Trump's pride in appointing the Supreme Court justices who made it possible. The convention featured emotional stories from women affected by the ruling, highlighting the dangers of being denied abortions in cases where pregnancies were not viable and posed health risks. Vice President Kamala Harris took a strong stand against Trump during her speech at the convention. She portrayed him as a threat to fundamental freedoms, including reproductive rights, and blamed him for the challenges many women are currently facing. Harris pointed out that the situation in their country was a result of Donald Trump's actions, emphasizing her belief that those actions had threatened American freedoms. In response, Trump posted numerous messages on Truth Social, often in capital letters, attacking Harris's comments. His current stance on abortion is complicated. Previously a supporter of abortion rights, Trump changed his position to anti-abortion in 2011 as he geared up for his Republican presidential campaign. Since then, he has struggled to present a consistent message on the issue. Democrats hope that the ongoing abortion debate will motivate their supporters in the upcoming elections just like it did in 2022. With many states banning abortions, Trump's attempts to change his stance on the issue could turn away both his conservative supporters and moderate voters. Tony Perkins from the Family Research Council criticized Trump's new statements, suggesting they might lose support from pro-life Republicans. Perkins warned that Trump's changing views could also hurt other Republican candidates who are strongly against abortion. As Trump deals with the abortion debate, he is facing criticism from both Democrats and Republicans. Democrats are concerned that if Trump is re-elected, he might be pressured by conservatives to push for even stricter abortion laws. From jokes to justice, Trump speaks at Bitcoin 2024. Donald Trump addressed the audience at the Bitcoin 2024 conference, expressing his gratitude for the opportunity to speak and acknowledging their patience. He jokingly noted that the Secret Service had told him he could use more time, and he happily agreed, saying he would stay as long as needed, even if it meant keeping the audience waiting longer. Trump then shifted to a serious note, commenting on the recent severe attack on Israel, which he attributed to Hezbollah. He emphasized the gravity of the situation, stating that such aggression should not be tolerated and that respect for the United States is crucial. He implied that such attacks would not have occurred during his administration, 
and expressed a strong stance against allowing this kind of aggression to continue. He concluded his remarks by expressing his excitement about being in Nashville and becoming the first American president to address a Bitcoin event anywhere in the world. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.